Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 19th of May. Today we got a lot of very interesting news, so let's start. First, we are going to start from Kharkiv area. As you can see, this map was updated and there are two colors from now on. The red one is the territory that remains under the Russian control and this gray area is the area uh, that Ukrainians managed to recapture so or restore their power on these territories. As you know, a lot of sources are saying that Ukrainians managed to reach the border and to establish their flag on the border. They were pretty successful in this offensive operation. But today we got information that the Russians managed to push Ukrainians from town Chernova and town Rubizhne on the northwest from Har of Kharkiv. You see the Kharkiv? We discussed this area many times. You we remember that the Ukrainians first they established control over the town Staras Saltov. After that, they head uh, towards the north, and they they return control over the town Rubizhne and Ternova. And this is the area exactly the area where the Ukrainians cross these 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 small forests and establish their national flag on the border. But this morning told us that the Ukrainians were pushed from this area, uh, that the Russians moved here some reinforcement, and that the Ukrainians uh, were forced to move towards the Saltov. And according to the Russian sources, they're saying that from now on, the Ukrainians, they're preparing their uh, defense area on the line Zalatov, no, Zalotchev, sorry, Saltov. So we can say that uh, this is the not the current position because the Ukrainians they are far on the on the north, but they are preparing their defense position somewhere in this line. As far as I understand, they are not planning to push Russians from this area, and they are not planning to uh, take Ternova and Rubizhne back. That means that we can say that the Ukrainians are not planning to uh, to cut this supply road. They did such a decision because they were forced and they uh, to move their forces toward the Donbass because in the Donbass there are a lot of problems and at the Donbass they need a lot of reinforcement from other front lines and mainly they need effective and powerful groups but not just the territory defense or militia they need the professional warriors and we know that the Kharkiv group is one of the most powerful and effective groups so that's why these guys were moved towards Donbass. Another important update about this area is that the Russian sources confirmed that Ukrainians established control that they first that they crossed this Seversky Donetsk River near the Stary Saltov and they managed and they established control around the town Hatomlya. They didn't get inside of Hatomlya, but according to the Russian sources, they are moving somewhere in this forests and these fields around Hatomlya. So it's like scout and sabotage groups around Hatomlya. Um, but the main important that they managed to cross the river and establish something like a stable connection between these two lands. And of course that's important if uh, Ukrainians are able ever to counter strike the Russians. Of course they would need this uh, cross line in the future. Now let's talk about Liman. Uh, there are not much changes and there are not much news from the front line but the important update we can see on the west source map if you remember a few days ago i told you that the russians announced that they established control over the town drobyshova this is the area and a few days ago i told you that by taking this town the russians split this liman area in two parts uh, Svetogorsk part and liman part and i told you that these guys already encircled some of them are encircled with operational encirclement, another party with operational tactical encirclement. But today, uh, the West Source map updated their map, as you see, and they're also showing us that this town is under the Russian control. Uh, Liman area is under very heavy bombing. If the Russians, they are not uh, running to take this town. First, they're bombing them and they are trying to reduce the morale of the soldiers in this area to ruins. So their main idea, they want to take this town without any battle. Um, I'm not sure if you saw, but I'm 
following the Russians publics, Russians uh, telegram channels and you need to know that every day I get more and more videos uh, from the front line that Ukrainian soldiers are surrendering. They surrender every day. One soldier, two soldiers, with big groups of six soldiers, seven soldiers, ten soldiers, twenty soldiers. And the main reason why the Ukrainians are surrendering every day because of uh, bad command. Of course, it's, we, I'm not sure that we can trust this video because this video was prepared by the Russians in, the, in their prisons where these prisoners of war are located. But I'm just trying to say that uh, it's not about to believe or not to believe. I'm trying to say about the informational war that Russians are, are doing right now. So it's the best time for them to start this informational war. And as I told you, um, my version, my opinion that the Russians, they don't have time to, to take control and capture this area town by town. It might take a lot of days, a lot of months, it's even years to take even just the Donbass. And we know that the Russians are planning to establish control over Nikolaev, Odessa, maybe in the, over entire Ukraine. So that's why they need to collapse the front line. And they see the massive informational attack on Ukraine, on their soldiers. And uh, so we'll see what's next. And I remind you that Liman area uh, is located on the uh, southeast of Izum. This is Izum. Uh, on the northeast from Slavyansk, this is the heart of the Donbas operation. This is the main siege where Ukrainians are located. And uh, by taking Liman, the, Ukraine, the Russians will obtain the key to start their offensive operation toward the heart of the Donbas. Now let's talk about Severodonetsk. Today, the Russians updated their map and they announced that they established control over the town Shadrishove. This town is located on the north from the Severodonetsk. This is the Severodonetsk, this is Lysychansk, and all these towns, Lysychansk, Severodonetsk, Rubezhin in the past, were called as the Lysychansk agglomeration. There are a lot of towns, a lot of industrial zones, and so on. And the Russian announced that they established control over the Shadrishove. As you see, this town is under the, according to the West map, this town was under the Russian for a very long time ago. And this information we got from the 13th of March. But as far as I understand, from the 13th of March, the Russians were pushed from this town. And just this morning, they, re they returned control over this town one more time. The situation in Severodonetsk is critical. Even more critical than in Azov at the beginning of the special operation. This is the reason why the head of the Ukrainian forces, head of Ukrainian military forces, he asked Zelensky permission to retreat from Severodonetsk towards Lysychansk. He asked Zelensky to allow him to, f to allow these forces to cross the Seversky Donetsk River. And that's, that means that the situation there are very critical. And as we know, Zelensky refuses any ask and any permission to retreat to leave the Severodonetsk. Of course, for many reasons, and one of the most important reasons is that the West countries uh, don't allow Zelensky to give such order. They need Ukrainians to hold the Russians as much as possible. So, Shidrichve has fallen. Also, today we got another piece of news that the Russians attacked Sirotinia and that there were very heavy clashes in this area. But the Russians didn't confirm and didn't say anything about the town Mitolkine, Vornovi and Barivske. These towns are still under the Ukrainian control. The Russians are trying to create another wedge between this group, Ukrainian army, and this group. And it's like the classic tactic to split the territory in two pieces. There are nice forests here. Russians, they're sending their troops among this forest and attack Sirotinia. And they're trying to split this territory in two pieces. And after that, first they will solve the issue with this part or with the Seversky Donetsk. First of all, if they are able to establish control over Sirotinia, that means the group in that located in Barivske is we can say that this group appeared in the operational tactical encirclement. Of course, they still have some ways to 
move from this territory they can just split this river cross this river and something like this but we'll see what's next now let's talk about Popasna Tashkovka area this is Popasna this is Tashkovka Tashkovka this is long big entire front line the um, the heaviest clashes are there the Ukrainians they're losing their positions they are were f they are forced every day to move towards Lysychansk yesterday we discussed about the operation around the Lysychansk oil refinery and uh, now I'm planning to show you one important and interesting video I will show you the dynamic of uh, Popasne area from um, as far as from the 9th of May till this morning this is our Popasne area as you see this is some Papasne, this is Zolotoya. On the north we can see the suburbs of uh, uh, Lysychansk agglomeration. This is our Rehova, this is our Toshkovka. We talk about a lot and I'm saying you that if I won't find any evidence that this uh, area is under the Russians, I won't mark this area with a blue cloud anymore. So let's take a look uh, on the dynamic of this territory from the 6th of May till this morning. Let's start. You see, there's like two ways of attack. First, uh, to, to towards Popasna, another towards Nizhny and Toshkovka. And as you can see, the Russian established control over Toshk Popasna. Then they're moving in different direction. They're moving towards Kamishovaha, Pilipchatina, towards Troitska. See, uh, and, uh, the, and by this morning, according to this map, you can see that the Russians established control over the Toshkovka. At least this morning they confirmed this. I was waiting for this uh, for a very long time and today they updated this uh, info and they're saying that the Russians established control. About this north operation, this is Popasne moving towards the Vrubovka. Yesterday we discussed the Vrubovka and as far as you can see according to this, this video, this dynamic picture, we see that the Russians established control over the suburbs of the Vrubovka. And now they're moving uh, in direction of Rubivka and they're planning to establish entire control over this territory. You see that the Russians are attacking Zelatoy and by the way, by the way, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers that surrendered uh, is from this area. A lot of forces from here, many forces, every day, every, like, now every single hour we got a video about six, two, five, ten soldiers that surrendered in this area. But now let's take a look at this map. You see that there is some differences and one of the most important differences is the town Toshkovka. Yes, we, we know that. But another important difference is this small bag. It's very interesting bag and very important bag. As you see according to this map, this bag, there is no bag. There is no bag like this. This bag is located here. The, and uh, as you see according to these sources according to the russian sources there is no bag in this area and according to the west sources map they're saying that this bag is under the russian control and this is very important because this bag changes the entire picture of the donbas arc, arc operation totally because we discussed many times that the russians they need to move towards rubivka to cut this railroad they need to move towards toshkovka that will allow them to move towards ustinovka and bilagora and so on also we discussed about the situation near bilagorovka so we discussed a small cauldron that the russians are planning to establish from bilagorovka towards rubivka so a small cauldron on this area so this is it something like this this is our cauldron and the russians are planning to boil this cauldron it was my opinion we discussed it many times and the west sources map they're showing us that the russians moving towards tripoli uh, i must say and i can confirm that ukraine for ukrainian military authorities they confirmed and they announced and they include this information in their reports that the russians we are fighting uh, near this town so it's some sort of true i don't know why the west source map, map updated this territory what kind of information do they have but if we just imagine that this is the main mainstream of the russian forces that they're moving towards tripoli that means that they're and if they establish control over tripoli and the suburbs of the Volodymyrovka. That means that the Russians are planning to move to 
among these along these towns towards Salidar. So this is like the approximate way of the Russian movement in this area. And of course they want to establish control over Salidar and to cut this railroad. What is this the railroad? I'll tell you. Salidar, Sal uh, what is this town? Salidar. Salidar is the uh, neck of the bottle. You see that this is the bottle and this is its neck. If the Russians are able to cut this Solidar, like to establish control over Solidar, and it's just 20 kilometers from their area that they're controlling, that means that they will cut this railroad, and this is the only railroad that leads to Seversk. We discussed yesterday that from the Seversk there are two ways. One leads to the oil refinery and another one leads to the Vrubivka. But if they are able to establish control over Solidar, all these ways uh, are no longer are useful and can exist and another important thing is this road this is the road of life Ukrainian road of life you discussed this road yesterday this is the part of this road so Solidar is the neck of the battle and if the Russians are able to establish control over Solidar we can say that this is already a cauldron because there is no other way to supply and to support this Donbass of course there is a river you can like you can, the only thing you can do is just to run away from this area through Siversk towards the Ukraine position in Slavyansk because this is the only roads there are small roads here but they lead nowhere they're leading nowhere so maybe this is an option of course it's a very interesting option and we will see about the progress and what is going to be next but it's very interesting now let's talk about Toshkovka Today the Russians they announced that there was something there. By the way, if you saw on this map, you see that Toshkovka is is under the Russian control. But we know that there are few maps and few few point of view about the situation. But let's assume that Toshkovka is under the Russian. And the thing is that according to the Russian sources map, they they mark this area with one very interesting icon. Like you see, like a soldier and the arrow that uh, show us the direction towards Ustinovka. Uh, the Russian sources map, they did that because they, according to the Ukrainian report, morning report, they announced that there were some military activity uh, near the Ustinovka. So you see, this is the Toshkovka. And if you remember, I told you that if the Russians are able to establish control over Toshkovka, they don't need even to take Chihirove. So if the Russians are able to take this area, I told you that from now on, from that moment, they have a small tunnel between Toshkovka and Seversky Danisk River. And using this tunnel, they are able to move towards Ustinovka, towards Biligora, and they are able to cross this river, and then they are able to attack Borivsky from the back. And the Russians, I repeat myself, they announced, they showed that something is happening here. So we'll see what's next. Another important uh, front line we can see, according to the Russian sources map, they're saying that the Russians started their attack in front of Zolotoya in this area. Now they're attacking from the Rehova, they're moving towards Vrubivka and Komishovaha. We discussed that they established control over the half of Komishovaha. So everything. Uh, worse and worse from day to day for the Ukrainians. Now the news from Mariupol, you know that uh, by this evening uh, around 2,000 of Ukrainian soldiers surrendered. As you know, the uh, vice commander of these forces of Azol surrendered today. He came out from Azovstal. He was captured, of course, by the Russians and main, most of the war prisoners of war are transferred in direction towards Donetsk but the most important ones were transferred toward the Russian Federation, towards the rostov na -Dono. So this vice commander of uh, uh, Azov Battalion was transferred toward the Russian Federation, towards Rostov. So we'll see what's next, but the main idea that, according to his words, there are more than 600 of soldiers are still in Azov, they are still wounded, and uh, we are turning to our discussion regarding the quantity of Ukrainians in this area. Imagine yourself that there are around 2,000 soldiers who have already surrendered. 
and how many are there I don't know and the most important commander of Azov, star, of Azov battalion is still there another important announcement about the situation in Ukraine the next Monday on the 23rd of May we are planning to make some event on this event you will find the, your favorite channels about the situation in Ukraine. There would be uh, War in Ukraine channel, there would be Defense Politics Asia, there would be Military Summary channel. And together we are planning to uh, analyze the situation in Ukraine. We will, we will answer your questions. This event is online. I will uh, add the description of this event to this video so you can read. Please, if you, if you want, you can join us. I think that we will have a lot of interesting there. And that's it for today. Thank you for your watching. Put your likes. Subscribe to my channel. And enjoy your day. Bye-bye.